Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Nick, and in this tutorial I wanted to set up uh, the basic parallax effect that you can see in Hollow Knight, because I finally broke down and purchased Hollow Knight over the recent Steam sale. Uh, I'd never played it before, although I'd seen it everywhere. It looks really amazing, and I wanted to see if I could recreate some of the effects that you see in that game in Godot using parallax layers and actually parallax scenes themselves. So one of the things I'd always wondered about is how you get a, a sort of particle parallax effect to work, because I'd only ever seen tutorials that use parallax effects on sort of static textures, but you can parallax entire scenes and you can parallax pretty much whatever you want. So we're gonna do that in this tutorial in order to get the particles to parallax, kind of like how you see in Hollow Knight. So let's take a look at how I built this scene. It looks pretty complicated, but it's really just a bunch of simple steps repeated more than once, and you don't need any code to do this. Um, so let's get started. So let's briefly go over my scene setup. And if you've seen my previous tutorial about snapping and panning the camera, uh, it's very similar. I'll link that video in case you want to go check that out. Uh, but for our sort of side scroll parallax, we have a really simple tile map. And uh, it's really long and thin because I don't really want to focus on sort of vertical or rather Y axis movement. I'm really only focusing on X axis movement because that's the sort of uh, axis along which I want my parallax effect to occur. Um, got my camera 2D and in my script for the scene, I'm snapping the position of the camera to the player in the exact same way that I did it in my previous tutorial. I have some collision shapes set up to sort of set boundaries for the player so that pretty much we can only go left to right. And then I have my Y sort with my player. So I'm not actually gonna put anything uh, in the Y sort. That's just kind of a standard practice that I do in case there are any other objects that I eventually place in the scene but you can do all of the effects we're about to take a look at without any code and without worrying about a Y sort. So uh, that's the scene setup itself. I've already created some actual textures that we're gonna use in the scene as well. So I've created some different particles that we can experiment with, and I drew inspiration from the various kinds of particles you can see floating around in Hollow Knight. Um, we have something that looks like a little spore or like a seed or something, a something that looks like a bubble, um, and then something that looks like a dream catcher, uh, in addition to pretty standard solid particle and then something that looks blurred. So I also set up something that looks like, I always forget if these are stalactites or stalagmites, but whichever ones these are, um, I basically duplicated a bunch of them across a width of 1920. So the one thing you want to make sure about is if you're using these sort of textures that you want to parallax, that they look like they repeat. So if I duplicate this and move it over here, as long as there's no sort of weird overlap or none of your sort of pixels get cut off uh, vertically or anything like that, and it looks like it's going to repeat fine, uh, then you should be fine. All right, so we're back in our scene here. Uh, let's create the foreground first. To my scene, I'm going to add a parallax background. And it always says parallax background, but you can just as well put it in the foreground. And actually, I'm gonna change the name to foreground, so we don't get confused. As a child of the parallax foreground, we're gonna add a parallax layer. And you could duplicate it now to create multiple, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and create one because it's the same process uh, for each one of them. Um, and so one of the things that I didn't realize when I was first working with parallax layers is that you don't have to instance uh, individual textures or sprites. You can, or you don't have to make individual textures or sprites a child of the parallax layer, I should say. Uh, you can do entire scenes. So you can parallax pretty much whatever whatever you want. Um, and that's what we're gonna do when we get to the particles. But for now, we'll just do our little stalag, whatever they're called, textures. So into that sprite, I'll drag uh, 
my first texture here. There we go. So one thing I want to do is under the sprite uh, properties, I want to go to offset and uncheck centered. Um, and that will sort of get rid of any sort of weird visual things uh, with the repeating effect. Um, another thing I'm going to do is for the parallax background, I'm going to set the layer to a value at zero or greater. Uh, so I'm probably going to do one because I always want these things to be in the foreground. But uh, that will ensure that the effect is happening in front of whatever is on the zero or sort of negative integer layers. Um, so you don't have to set that for each thing. You can set the layer for the parallax, uh, in this case, foreground node itself, and then everything that's a child will be affected. So we got our parallax layer. We got our sprite. So in our parallax layer properties, we're going to go to, go to motion. And for mirroring, we're going to set the x value to the same width as that texture. And I already know that it's 920. And as soon as I do that, you can see it creates a duplicate. So if I save that and run this scene, you can see that it's duplicating along the x axis. And there's no parallax effect yet, but it is there. And that's a good start. OK, so to get the parallax effect going, you want to change the motion scale. So along the x axis, I'm going to change this scale to, let's say, 1.5. So I want to use a number higher than 1 because this uh, parallax layer is in the foreground. If the layer that the parallax uh, node is 1 or greater, you want to make sure that your parallax nodes themselves that are going to be creating the effect have a scale that's greater than one. So if I save that, and then restart that scene, you can see that our parallax effect now works. Uh, so that's a bit much for sort of this particular layer, but we're going to add some more. And we're going to make sure that each layer has a different motion scale. And that will give us a nice sort of smooth transition between the different rows of uh, textures that we're going to use. So this is the basic process. I'm going to go ahead and create a bunch more layers, or a bunch more rows, rather. And then I'll talk about how I did that uh, once I've created those. There we go. So it's 1 all the way to 0.5, basically. Let's check that out. There you go. So you can already see our real parallax effect in action. Um, so one thing I want to do is make sure it doesn't start repeating. So you can kind of see they're all kind of lined up like that. I want to offset the x value of the repeating effect so that it gives us a little bit more variation and doesn't look like this sort of weird duplicated effect for each row. So starting with layer 2, under offset, I'm going to basically just set the x value of the offset to Actually, it can be anything because the repeating effect will still work as long as these values are different. So let's say minus 500 for that one. For layer 3, we'll say plus 500. For layer 4, uh, we'll say, let's say minus 300. And for layer 5, we'll just say... Um, give it an entire 960. There we go. So let's check that out. So you can see right away from the beginning, the rows are a bit more staggered. So it gives a little bit more of a natural appearance to those rows. It's a bit harder to tell that they're actually the same. All right. So another thing I want to do is for the rows themselves, I want to change the color value, or rather I want to modulate them. Uh, so that it looks like the rows closest are darkest and the rows closest to the player are sort of lighter or more visible. So for our fifth layer down here, for the sprite itself, I'm going to go to visibility, modulate, and change that all the way, well, pretty close to black. This one will be even lighter. And then <laughs> the very first one I won't mess with. So another thing I want to do is actually change the size a little bit to give a little bit more variation. 
I'm going to sort of manually drag the sort of bounding rect of that shape up and down just to give it a bit more variation. I make that one tall, make that one kind of a little shorter. And for that one, we'll make that one tall. Actually, I'll go back to that one and make that a bit shorter. And there we go. You can see it's relatively easy to create a pretty cool parallax effect. You just want to think about how your layers look on top of each other and then make sure your sort of relative motion for each one is a bit different to give you that nice sort of gradient between the rows. So that's our parallax effect for our foreground. I'm going to go ahead and do the background so we can see what that looks like. It's the exact same techniques. Instead of using a number greater than one, I'm going to use numbers less than one. So I'll do that and come right back. There we go. Get a nice layered parallax effect in the foreground and the background. So the crystals are a bit harder to see because they're all the same color. I'm going to modulate these as well. Um, but for each one of these, instead of making them darker, I'm going to make them different colors. So let's say, oh, you know what? I think my layers are actually not correct. That one looks like it's in front. Let's put that in the back. There we go. So I need to rearrange these a little bit. That needs to come there. Oh, okay. There we go. I actually had these in the opposite order. <laughs> um, so they were sitting on top of each other, but let's take a look and see what that looks like. Okay, that's actually a bit easier to read. Um, so yeah, definitely make sure <laughs> you pay attention to the order your layers are showing up in. So I've actually already created the particle scene that I want to use. Um, so let me show you what I did. It's its own scene with the particles 2D node as the root. And then let's take a look at how I've set up these particles. So for the texture, I'm just using the standard solid white dot and you can use whatever you, texture you want. It's the same process, and then you just play with the parameters. Um, but underneath time, I have my lifetime at two seconds, uh, pre-process at two seconds, so it already looks like it's been running for a little bit when you sort of enter the view rect. Um, speed scale, 0.5, just to give it that slow, casual look. Under drawing, I've set the sort of visibility rect to be equal to the size of our viewport. In this case, it's 1600 by 900. Under process material, it's a particles material and you need that, otherwise it won't work at all. Um, under emission shape, it's a box and I've set it to slightly less than the full size of the viewport, 1600 by 900. So under gravity, I've set everything to zero because I don't really want my particles moving in any one particular direction. But under initial velocity, I've set initial velocity to 20 and then randomness to 1. And that's how you get that sort of effect where it appears that each one is sort of drifting in a random direction. And that's pretty much it. So you can create whatever effects you want with your particle scene uh, by messing around with all these parameters. But let's take a look at actually adding this back into our parallax uh, layers here. So instead of using the layers that we've already created, uh, I'm actually going to create some new parallax layers. And I don't want to use these because some of the mirroring is a bit off. Like for mine, the mirroring on the actual objects is bigger than the actual viewport, which is, nine, which is 1600 by 900. Um, so you can avoid that problem and save yourself a headache just by making everything the same size. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a new child node for a parallax background. And I'll rename this particle parallax one. And then I want this to be sort of at the same layer as the player. So I want it to be behind my foreground objects here. So I'll move that right there. And then to that, I'll add a parallax layer. And then to that, I'll instance my particles scene here. Um, so that's parallax particles. And there we go. You can already see they show up. Uh, but just like I moved the different layers for the objects, I'm going to move this layer up to where we can actually see it. So somewhere in the center there. There we go. So under this parallax layers parameters, I'm going to go to motion. I'm going to leave it at one because it's right where the player is. 
under mirroring, I'm going to say 1600, because that's the total width of that scene. And make sure the layer is at zero, because if you remember, the foreground stuff is at one, the background stuff is at negative one. So for this one, I want to make sure it's at zero, just so it's in the middle there. And if we take a look, there we go. So you can kind of see the particles are showing up down below here. That's because the little stalag, whatever is on the, in the foreground, aren't completely covering up those gaps. Um, and I could go back and change that, but that's fine. That's just something you can fix when you sort of fill that space in your foreground. That's really more of an art uh, direction thing, but uh, just to complete the effect, this is how you do it. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to add a couple more layers of particles, but the process is exactly the same, and I'm going to use some different textures. Uh, so let's see what that looks like. All right, there we go. So I've added one more layer of particles in the foreground, even closer to the camera than the sort of dark colored objects in the bottom of the screen here. Um, and you can see how they sort of move in front of everything uh, and parallax properly. So it's the same process as uh, the original sort of particle scene that we just looked at. So you can add as many as you want, as many as makes sense for the scene. Um, and then you can change up the textures to create different effects with different kinds of particles, etc. Um, so that's it. I think there's probably some more stuff you could do with blurring certain layers using shaders and stuff like that to give it even more of a realistic effect. Uh, but I might save that for another video. I think that's enough for this one. Hope you all enjoyed and hope to see you in the next video. Thanks everyone.